Hey y'all, it's pretty chilly out there. I got my hoodie on today. Well, today's the day I'm going to discuss safety and I promised you that I would. This is part one of two parts. I put this information together last year. Everything, and I mean everything, is still relevant. Just now I was sent an article warning everyone to start getting their money out of the banks as soon as possible. Things are going to start happening. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to discuss it with my husband, Paul, in just a couple hours. So, oh boy, let's get started with this. None of this is to scare you. It's to prepare you. I'm giving you food for thought. I've watched movies, I've read books, and I've researched online, and I do have my own ideas, just, you know, being older and more experienced. I've got ideas on how to stay safe in different scenarios. First of all, let me say nomads are tough people. Uh, we enjoy freedom and are willing to leave the comfort of our houses to express our independence and zest for life. Now, during a disaster, that toughness will be called upon to survive, and I want to offer um, some of the things that other nomads and we all have discussed. I want us all to consider protection and safety on the road. There are many choices of weapons to carry, from firearms to bear spray. I want to offer a list of assorted weapons and describe various uses for each. A lot of this will be discussed more tomorrow, but we'll touch on it today. But there are other behaviors that will keep you safe other than using a hammer or a firearm. Keeping your vehicle unharmed from theft and break-ins will keep you secure as well. And remember, not all danger is from humans. We also need to think about protecting ourselves from animals too. There will be animals running around. And I'll discuss that. During a disaster, there will be many dogs roaming the streets and those loose dogs will eventually join packs. So be aware of that. I'm dedicating this section of my series to types of weapons and proper thinking during social collapse from multiple types of scenarios we may face in life. There could be all kinds of things, not just financial disaster. First, I want to address keeping your vehicle safe from theft and break-ins. The most important method of keeping your rig safe is to keep all of your windows covered. And I do mean all of your windows. Being a stealthy nomad is key to security. You need to be stealthy. You don't want people, you don't want them to know if there's somebody in here or not. A thief looks for easy targets. If your front side windows and windshields are uncovered for anyone to look through, they will imagine that nobody is in your vehicle and they can actually see that nobody's in there. Too many nomads use the curtain system behind the front seats as a way to conceal the back dwelling area where their items are stored. You no, know, they're placed in their, their living space and you don't want people to see these. These nomads leave the cabin area of their rig in view, whether they are in the rig in it or not. Well, personally me, I consider this a false sense of security. A thief might assume no one is in the vehicle and smash the front window, open the door and take whatever they want. And if you're in here, that could be you. And they're gonna reach anything that they can, they can find, that they can reach with their hands. If all windows are covered, the thief can't assume anything. There may or may not be anyone in the van. A thief doesn't want to fight. <laughs> they just don't. They want it as easy as possible. So they will move on to a different victim if all of your windows are covered because they won't know. So keep your windows covered whether you're inside or not. I use limo tinting in all of my windows except the two front and the windshield. I don't feel cooped up when I'm inside my van. I mean, I can look outside and I can enjoy what's going on out here, the mountains. But my two front windows and my windshield are covered, covered with window coverings. No one can see inside my vehicle day or night. Now this summer I have been keeping my two side windows down just a little bit so I can get the air coming through. Now let's talk about catalytic converters. They're the newest prize item to steal off vehicles. A catalytic, a catalytic converter is an important item in the muffler system. Now inside the catalytic converter, it's called, well, they're called a CAT, capital C, capital A, capital D. 
There's precious metals such as palladium, platinum, and rhodium inside. And they're, um, they're worth something. The cat is located underneath the vehicle situated middle front, the passenger side. I'm not sure if that's for all cars. It's connected to the muffler and can be quite easy to dismantle quickly. The cats are usually sold to auto mechanic garages. That's sad, isn't it? The mechanics pay the thief for the used catalytic converter and then charge customers for a brand new cat, a catalytic converter. These can get as much as $250 to $1,000 for a stolen catalytic converter. I mentioned this issue before because I watched a YouTube video of two thieves quickly taking off a catalytic converter from a parked car on the street in broad daylight. It took them only three minutes or less. They knew what they were doing expertly. A bystander secretly filmed this theft. And just so you know, it's never a good idea to try to stop someone from this type of behavior as you could get hurt or you could get killed. So if you're gonna film it, just do it without anybody seeing you do it. I doubt thieves will try to steal a catalytic converter or any other item from a car if all the windows are covered up and blackened out. A thief, I don't think, would be apt to take that chance. They might, but I think the chances are gonna be less. Perhaps, I mean, you never know, a 200 pound bodybuilder could be inside a vehicle during this theft. No one wants to take on a bodybuilder, right? Well, I don't. Thieves will take the path of least resistance. So please cover your windows. I've said that so many times, whether you are inside or outside of your vehicle. The only two exceptions are when you are inside your vehicle sitting in the front seat or you travel with a large dog and you want your windows cracked while you are away so that your pet can breathe properly, especially in the summer. Now, if you have a very friendly dog or a very small dog and a thief is hell bent on getting inside, your pet may not care. They might actually lick them when they come in. I mention this because I've seen dogs that love attention and I imagine these dogs licking the face of a thief thinking they're gonna get some attention from them. <laughs> No, so different breeds of dogs will behave differently. I'm not sure what Abby would do. Paul and I have discussed this. She might actually start wagging her tail saying, oh, somebody's coming. So having a dog is not a guarantee of protection. There are cameras on the market that can be placed on your vehicle and record what's happening inside or outside of your vehicle when you're away. This is also useful when you're inside, but have all your windows covered, because sometimes if they're all covered, you're not gonna see what's going on in the outside. I won't recommend any one camera because there are so many types of vehicles, and some nomads have internet access and some don't. Some of them require, cameras require internet, so um, you need to go on Amazon or just go online and search for the right camera for you if you want to go that route. Now here's a trick you can use to ward off thieves. Turn on some music inside your vehicle when you go into the store. Perhaps use a transistor radio or another device that you can leave in the car. This will deter a thief. They'll think somebody's inside. Combined with all of your windows covered, it will appear someone is inside. Now, <laughs> don't play Lawrence Well kind of music, okay? Pick something a bit fiercer. Keep thieves away from your vehicle. They don't. When you are inside your car, your vehicle, your van, for the evening, use a red light. Even with window shades, there could be cracks that can let light through. Using a red light allows you to see what you need to see, but from the outside, it isn't as noticeable. I have left my curtains on my side middle windows uncovered in the evening. And what I did was I went outside to see if others could see inside. I just put my face really close to it. So yes, <laughs> I could see enough of everything when I put, if I put my face close to the window. So I encourage you and to use regular coverings, right? 
So I want you to go out and evaluate what others can see inside your rig at night using different methods of security. You do not want others to watch you getting ready for bed or watching you do anything for that matter, right? Keep your home private and secure. When it's at nighttime, even with red lights, put your shades down on all of your windows. Now, I mentioned I use fairy lights that I bought on Amazon. They're USB powered and I have them pinned to the ceiling of my minivan. I use red lights during the evening and brighter colors during the day if I want to keep them on. Fairy lights only use one watt of energy per hour and this is minimal use. Well, it's the most minimal actually and it is quite manageable. It's not going to drain your, um, your power stations. The best method of being safe and keeping your vehicle safe is to be aware. Be aware, be situationally aware. Follow your gut instincts. And if you have a hunch something is wrong, check out your surroundings or leave the area. Use common sense. I always say common sense. It's become so rare, it's actually considered a superpower. Do you have that superpower? Well, let's develop it and let's use common sense. Use your gut instincts. If you think something's wrong, get out of the way. Now, I'm told the worst place to be for vehicle break-ins are trailheads. Many hikers lock up their cars and head off to enjoy a hiking trail, only to return later and find that their vehicles are ransacked or stolen. What they do is they just smash the windows. So here's a reminder, lock your doors tight. Cover all your windows. Play music inside when you're away from your rig. Use outside cameras if that's what you want to do and you can find the right ones. Use red lights at night inside your vehicle. Be aware, be situationally aware and use common sense. At some stage in a possible collapse of the dollar, there will be social unrest. This isn't your usual keep your doors locked type of protection. Social upheaval will result in many people getting hurt and or killed. Nomads are especially vulnerable to attacks. People who travel and live in their vehicles may or may not live in the town of their choice when all hell breaks loose. Those who live in a city or town where they know people and where everything is situated will be in better shape than those who are total strangers to an area. You know, just think of you don't know where anything's at or you don't know anybody there. Unfamiliarity. Did I say the right? Unfamiliarity can breed distrust. Nomads are fish out of water and may not know where to go. They could end up in dangerous areas of any town or city. Local citizens will be distrustful of unfamiliar faces. Nomads will want to fit in and enjoy safety with the residents. They could be stuck in a place for most of these catastrophic scenarios. You would be stuck. You don't know. You don't know the people. And they're looking at you like you're just a stranger. Unless a traveler can offer specific skills, they will be pushed out of any safety zones that honest local dwellers can offer. A financial collapse that leads to social unrest is but one of many developments. Floods, hurricanes, fires, EMP strikes, or pandemics can occur. The following safety tips are relevant to all situations. When human beings are frightened and in a hurry, they can be mean and cruel because really anger stems from fear. Not only do we need to be safe from natural disasters, but more importantly, we need safety from other humans as well as animals that will be set free from their homes. Yes, animals, especially dogs, will be let loose because their owners can no longer manage feeding and caring for them. Dogs will also get away because owners are frightened and aren't paying attention. It's going to be stressful. These dogs will in time join packs and roam together. This is a dangerous situation and weapons will need to come into play. Sadly so, but true. There are many distinct types of weapons. A common household item can be used as a deadly weapon. Now, I keep a hammer close to my front door. I can use it as a weapon or a device to break open my window should the need arise to escape from my van. I carry several types of knives, cooking knives, pocket knives, and bushcraft knives. I know where they are at all times and are strategically placed throughout my rig. 
learn how to use your knife. It's not enough just to have one, but know how to hold it and know how to use it. You can find a lot of this stuff on YouTube. When I am out hiking, which it doesn't happen very often, but I used to a little bit more than now, I carry my favorite bushcraft knife along with my bear spray and an air horn. Noise makers are useful to ward off a thief or an animal. But I won't hesitate to use my weapon on a vicious dog or another animal that is a problem to my well-being. I don't want to be disabled and pit bulls and, and vicious dogs, other vicious dogs can harm you. Firearms are a bit stickier to deal with. In the USA, there are specific laws governing the possession and use of a gun. These laws vary from state to state as well as city to city. In Washington, D.C. and New York City, it is forbidden to be in possession of a gun, even with a concealed carry permit. There is prison time if you're caught with a gun in those two um, cities. The most popular firearm that I have found is a 9mm. Because of their popularity, it will be easy to find and trade ammunition. I'm just touching on the firearms. I'll talk later about it. One rule of thumb regarding a firearm and firing it. Listen to this. Every bullet fired at a living thing has a huge price tag attached to it. If you own a firearm or are thinking about purchasing one, make certain you understand the laws in each state that you are in. If you're a nomad, wow. Most nomads carry firearms in their vehicles. When they're traveling from state to state, they need to be aware of the laws of the state they are passing through. Now, except for those two cities I talked about previously, there is a federal law that allows firearms to be driven across states and it's called safe passage. But certain states have different requirements. They're, all, they're a little different when you're passing through with a firearm. For instance, California and Illinois require the firearm to be in a locked box and ammunition to be separate from the firearm. A lot of times they say, put it in, it has to be in your um, trunk, but I don't have a trunk. So you can find this information on the internet. Search for gun laws state to state and it will come up. Everything you need to know will be available. When I travel across the country, and I have a few times, I decide which states I will pass through. And what I do is I check for any requirements and I write them down. This keeps me safe from breaking any laws and losing my firearm to a gung-ho officer. Believe me, they're out there. So what I do is I kind of write them down and when I know that I'm going to start going through before I take off in that area, I make sure that everything's locked up the way that they require. It's highly recommended that all owners of a firearm get a concealed carry license. It is easier to get one than it ever was in the past. Many states do not require a concealed carry class. In fact, the federal government is thinking of offering a concealed carry license with an online application form. It's a huge responsibility to own a firearm and should not be taken lightly. You must be prepared to use your firearm, if necessary, with a clear head. It is also essential that you go to a firing range and learn to use your gun properly. Ask the shooting range employees what is expected of you when you go in if you've never been there. Actually, what I did was I went on YouTube and I watched videos about the do's and don'ts at a shooting range. You'll be surprised how many tips they will give you and let you know what to do and what not to do. For one, like if you're going to ask somebody, you don't, if you're holding your gun, you don't go like that. <laughs> you know, there are some. It, it's interesting. So go on YouTube and actually check it out. When staying safe during a collapse due to social unrest, the best advice I can offer is to get away from crowds. Now, I advise nomads to be close to a store if they have a hunch a storm is brewing and an emergency was about to take place right in the near future. But believe me, my opinion, when the shit hits the fan, my advice for anyone with the ability to leave quickly is to get away from the city and the crowds. Get inside the nearest store 
purchase what you need right before and then drive far away to a designated pre-planned area outside of a city or town. You're going to have to determine how clogged the streets are going to be, but you need to, it's a timing and it's a hunch. It's a common sense thing. So this brings me to the point of pre-planning, but I'm going to stop here and continue tomorrow. I have a lot more. I will discuss planning with your family, your friends, and other nomads, or just going solo, if that's what you prefer to do. But you still could talk and get some advice and get a discussion going. I'm going to talk about families getting out of rioting areas, and I will offer suggestions and advice for seniors helping others that are stressed out, caring, and keeping small children safe. Because sometimes families are going to have to go out and they're going to have small kids. So basically how we all can work together if and when this happens. So thank you for watching and don't be scared. Be prepared. Think about these situations beforehand. If we work together, we can help others. If we plan and prepare, we can offer help to others. If you just sit back on your couch and pretend nothing could ever happen, you will be the one who will end up freaking out and begging for help. That's sad. So it's better to prepare and then have enough to share. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Please share and please subscribe to this channel. I love you guys. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Okay? Part two.